So with the competitive season of Yu-Gi-Oh! basically over, other than the 250th YCS and maybe YCS Philadelphia, uh, I want to talk about things that we could see on the next ban list. Also, too, I don't have any more regionals here in Florida for the rest of the season until we get Cyberstorm access, most likely. So, yeah, that's great. Basically, the competitive season for me is just totally over. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo-boo-boo-boo brown stain, you like that, off of that subscribe button, so we can climb even higher the 1100 ladder, I really do appreciate all the support, hope you're having a fantastic day, trying to upload daily, my health has been kind of up and down on a roller coaster as of late. For you newer subscribers, I have a rare type of cancer called von Hippelindau disease. I talk about it in my book. My book is linked down in the description. Half of all profits are going to the VHL Alliance to help raise awareness on VHL. So if you'd like to go check that out, link is in the description. So I'm gonna try and keep on posting every day. It's just my health has been a roller coaster, ladies and gentlemen. I've been waking up nauseous and getting sick and the whole night. Anyway, I'm doing good, don't worry, because it, during that time, I've been able to put together a ban list. These are things that I just want to see happen. It was actually kind of difficult putting this together between, you know, maybe a couple hot takes, depending on what people may think about it. Um, let me know down in the comments below after you watch the whole video. Um, but it's hard to make a balance whenever you have so many different decks that can compete in this kind of meta, which is a good thing. You want diversity. You want multiple decks to be able to compete, whether it's at a local level, regional level, what have you, preferably the regional and YCS level. But we are in a much more diverse format than we were last format. There are some things I'm bringing over from my previous balance that uh, I want to still talk about because I do feel that these cards should maybe get hit uh, at least at some point in their lifespan. So with all that out of the way, let's just dive on into it. First of all, or first of all, first off is the ban cards. I'm still sticking to my guns on this. All the Ishizu fairies need to be fucking banned. I don't care that they went from three to one. These cards are degenerate as fuck. And even when I went to the Kissimmee Regional, it was actually one. The first place player was uh, Ilya Higdon, who is a local. Hope hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Ilya Higdon. Ilya Higdon. Anyway, a uh, local Jacksonville, Florida player. He ended up winning the regional with Naturia Runic. Now, if you've heard me talk about before Naturia Runic, I think the deck is fucking idiotic. I do not feel like it should function as a deck. It makes no sense to me how the deck can function as well as it does. And hitting the Ashizu Fairy cards is basically an indirect hit to Naturia Runic and mill decks in general. You know, being able to have a an Aigido or a Kelbeck to mill five, possibly 10 cards if you hit them back to back. In Naturia, you hit multiple Sacred Trees that gives you multiple searches because Sacred Tree and the Naturias in general were made back in a time when hard ones per turns really weren't a fucking thing, i.e. Naturia Beast and Naturia Barkion. So I feel like that these cards just need to be banned. I still hold to the fact that they are some of the most overpowered cards ever printed in the game, just with the type of effects that they have, Aigido and Kelbeck being able to mill and be fucking extenders when cards get milled, it, it's it's just disgusting. Let's just take these cards out back and shoot them in the nuts, put them in the grave where they belong, and let's just forget about it. And like I said, it's also a hit to Naturia Rudik, which we're going to be talking more about later on in this banlist discussion. Um, next up for ban, Terraforming and Instant Fusion. I talked about this on my last banlist, and the Terraforming actually I think is kind of a smart hit. I saw that from a TCG player uh, article writer. I can't remember if it was Hanko Chow or someone else, but uh, one of the writers had mentioned how terraforming gets more and more overpowered as more and more decks have field spells. And think about all of the decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! right now that have a field spell. Gate Guardian, for God's sakes, has a field spell. Runic has a field spell. Ishizu has a field spell. Cash Tira. When we get Mana Dome in uh, Cyberstorm Axis, which is another like Visa Starfrost type of archetype, that has a field spell. All the Visa Starfrost archetypes have a fucking field spell. Scareclaw, you name it. So by taking away terraforming, you take away every single deck that has a field spell, Trick Stars, etc., etc., is the point I'm trying to make. You take away that extra potential copy that they have of, of a field spell to where they have to have in-house archetypes type monsters or they have to run something not of an archetype like planet pathfinder in order to be able to get that extra search of their field spell or they have to max out on three copies of metaverse if they want to do that so i feel like with having metaverse now back at three since mystic mine is banned i feel like we can finally just ban terraforming the fact that it's just a generic search for any 
field spell, I feel it's just too good now in this day and age of Yu-Gi-Oh. You can argue that because it's a one of, it's not as good. Basically every deck now that has a field spell, which is basically every Yu-Gi-Oh deck now ever, um, has four field spells instead of three. But I think knocking that number down to an actual three minus any sort of in-house archetype cards that can just search a field spell or you know, if it's, let's say, a Cash Tira name, like if Pressured Planet was like Cash Tira, Pressured Planet, being able to search it that way, I think would help lessen the consistency of decks in general. Instant Fusion, I talked about in my last ban list video a couple months back that I feel that Instant Fusion is just always going to forever be a problem anytime that level five or lower fusion monsters are printed into the game. It's a thing that Konami has to constantly keep an eye on. Banning instant fusion, which I believe the OCG has already has done, I think would really help solve a lot of those issues. Um, next up on the ban is Diabolsis the Mind Hacker. You know, a lot of people were calling for Diabolsis to be banned right when we first got Cash Tira, and I do think that this is a valid hit to Cash Tira. Diabolsis, you know, keep in mind, is a generic just two level seven monsters. So any sort of level seven good cards or a good archetype that focuses around level sevens down the line can use Diabolsis. And remember, it's just a simple detach to banish a card from the extra deck. And don't forget that if it pops a monster by battle, it can banish a card from the graveyard face down. Yeah, that doesn't come up often, but that's still another way to banish cards face down to trigger Shangri Era. So if for whatever reason you make the Diabolsis going second, which I don't know why the fuck you would, but maybe you're in a simplified game state and you have Shangri Era, well, you can detach, banish a card from the extra deck face down, lock out a zone. Oh, hey, just popped a monster by battle, banish a card from the grave face down, lock out a second zone. Use the third effect, mill cards on top of the deck, lock out a third zone. I think that Diabolsis, it was just a matter of time. I think seeing Diabolsis getting banned uh, either now or maybe a little bit later down the line, like maybe on the next ban list if Cash Tier is still an issue, I feel is something valid that we could see happen. Um, so that that's just my opinion on Diabolsis. You know, is it the most broken thing in the world? No, but I do think it needs to be banned. I think it's just a little bit all around too good. Uh, next up, Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Now you're probably wondering, Avery, it's not really being abused except in some Labyrinth builds, but we saw it being abused uh, with Nightmare Griffin dumping it uh, when Tier Element was first becoming like a big Tier 1 and then later a Tier 0 deck. And I feel that Eradicator, just with how many decks now focus on spells or traps or both combined, you know, look at Labyrinth with how many traps they play. Eldritch, Cash Tira focusing on spells. I feel Eradicator is just an auto win button. You know, we don't have things like Red Reboot for going second to just pay half our life points to knock out that issue. And so, you know, I, I don't really feel like that there's a valid argument to say that Eradicator should still be around because if you're going second, you really don't have a way to out it unless like you just get lucky and don't open up a lot of spells. But if Labyrinth hits you with an Eradicator and they call spells and you don't open up a lot of spells, you're probably losing that game anyway, unless they're just being a dumbass and using it in game one and calling spells and then you're just playing a trap deck. You know, it, it's it's kind of a catch-22, and I feel that just eliminating it as a problem would solve a lot of issues currently and down the line. This is also something that I want to bring up too. Maybe it should be hit. I don't know. I want to know what you have to think. Um, but Naturia Beast, I think needs to potentially be banned. It's just so good being able to have that multiple Omni Negate. It's not a hard once per turn. Milling two cards isn't an issue for Naturia Runic. And I feel that Naturia Beast has just been an issue for way too long and it needs to be dealt with. Uh, moving on to one here. Also, Evenly Match. I feel that Evenly Match, like I talked about before, is way too busted at three. You activate it, they negate it. Cool, I'll open up another one. I'm just gonna banish all your cards anyway. That shit is toxic, it's idiotic, and it needs to be hit to one. I don't think it needs to be banned, but hitting it to two, preferably one, I think would solve a lot of issues. I need to kind of speed up here because we're already at nine minutes into the video. Uh, Cash Tira, Fenrir, Unicorn, and Pressure Planet all need to go to one. It would hit the consistency of Cash Tira. It would kind of reel them in a bit. You know, it, it's one of the best decks of the format. It needs to get hit. Runic Tip. This is a big hit to Runic that I was calling for on the last banlist discussion that we did. Runic Tip is basically just a blank card in Runic. It's any Runic spell you want or you can just summon out a fusion. And it adds so much consistency to the Runic deck and hitting it to one, you can still play Runic. You just don't have basically three blank cards in your deck that turn into any fucking Runic spell you want. Uh, next up here is potentially branded opening. You know, again, we're seeing a lot of different decks that can do well in this format. And I think if Konami wants to push 
Cyberstorm access to actually have people want to play Mana Dome, Numerelia, these new things. I think that they're going to have to hit these previously good top decks like, you know, Branded, Kashtira, Sprite, so on and so forth. Um, that's actually something I totally forgot to put on this list that, you know, potentially we should see Sprite Blue, maybe Sprite Jet, maybe Gigantic Sprite be hit in some way to two or to one, preferably to one, to kind of reel the deck in so it's just not as explosive and doesn't have so many fucking extenders because that's basically just all that Sprite is, is just extender upon extender. You know, we need to reel in that engine a bit so it's not so splash splashable with so many, you know, extenders that the deck has. So hitting Runic Tip to one, I think would be good. Also, as I mentioned, maybe hitting Gigantic Sprite or Sprite Blue or Jet to one as well. Uh, branded opening just hurts the consistency of uh, branded so that they can't pop off as well. Maybe Alubar and or Spriggan's Kit, maybe hitting those to one, I don't know. Uh, that seems almost like that's a little bit too much. Um, and then maybe some hits to Labyrinth going to one. You know, I, I feel like Labyrinth is almost a little bit too good, but also feels kind of fair. So I, I don't, I feel like that's kind of up in the air. I don't know if Labyrinth really needs to be hit that hard, if at all. I feel like Eradicator kind of just solves the issues as it is. Also for my hot take for this, you know, could we maybe see Metamorphosis return to one at some point? You know, if you think about it, you it's only as good as the levels that you have in your deck. And, you know, what the Fusion Monster says, it can only be Fusion Summon. You know, maybe Konami could do, you know, an Arado with Metamorphosis where it has to just be a generic Fusion Monster where if it says if it can only be summoned by Fusion Summon, then you can't play it. I don't know. That's just something that was kind of a hot take that uh, I think will probably give me a lot of hate. Uh, to two, maybe some branded cards. I don't know if, if branded Fusion for sure really go to one or to two. I feel like that just kind of kills branded altogether. Uh, same with hitting Fallen Albaz. I don't really think that's the way to go. But, you know, let me know down in the comments. Do you think that any of the branded cards should go to two? It was kind of just something on my mind. Pot of Prosperity should definitely go to two, maybe to one. You know, banishing three or six cards from your extra deck face down is not a fucking issue. Like, there's not anything that you lose from doing that. Look at Cash Tier. They're playing Garua, Elder Entity Ints, Infinitrack Goliath, just to have targets to banish from their extra deck to attach to a Rise Heart when they banish from Prosperity. So it's not like it's even a detriment to you. Doing half damage doesn't matter because if you're able to break the opponent's board in main phase one, swing for damage in battle phase, then go main phase two, use Pot of Prosperity. Now you do half damage for the turn, but you don't care because you already attacked in the battle phase. So the half damage thing is just a null, is a uh, mute point. I feel that prosperity we could see get hit to some number lower than three. Uh, finally, to three, Pot of Desires, Residal, Starling, uh, Substitute, Wind Up Zemighty, I think could all come back to three and wouldn't be a big issue. Zemighty's been banned for years. And then also Chain Strike and Final Countdown to three because those cards aren't doing jack shit in 2023. So guys, uh, sorry for taking up so much of your time here. I didn't realize how long this video was going to be, but I wanted to take the time to kind of go through some things that are on my mind for the ban list. Hopefully we see some of these cards get hit. You know, I'm not going to try and predict what Konami is going to do because I just think that that's impossible. But these are some things that I would like to see happen, uh, you know, more or less with like, you know, maybe hitting Labyrinth, maybe hitting Naturia Beast. Um, but let me know down in the comments below. It's kind of hard to figure out what should be hit whenever, again, so many different decks have been doing well and topping and, you know, having representation, which is healthy for the format. It's just we need to reel in some of the more overpowered things, especially like Sprite, Cash Tier, and to a lesser extent, Branded, and definitely Naturia Runic. Fuck that deck. I don't feel like Trap Trick really needs to be hit all that much. I feel it's just pretty much a fair rogue deck. Same goes for Sword Soul. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.